what you know what is happening there. Um, like, is Beth filming? I yeah. <laughs> yes. Good. And, and what is this for? It's M for Van. Van. I shoot for Main Video Activist Network uh -huh. um, and do just little brief interviews that they put on. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I, I so love we, it. So we have not heard that the charge has been dropped. I was arrested in St. Paul alone with my two producers. Completely outrageous and unacceptable. Mm -hmm. That producers, that uh, reporters are being cracked down on by the St. Paul police. Well, it's not just the St. Paul police because this is a national security event. That's what it's called, a special um, event that is run by the Secret Service. And, uh, I was arrested by the Minneapolis police in St. Paul as I was trying to get my producers free. They had been arrested as they were covering a protest. Yet they're under the, the Secret Service, the police? Yeah, and so I went to where they had been filming the protest mm -hmm. and um, uh, went up to the riot police line and I said, you know, my producers are accredited, they need to be freed. I said, you can see that I'm accredited also. I just run from the convention floor so I had all my security credentials on. and. Um, and they just ripped me through the line and they uh, pulled my arms behind my back and they twisted my arms behind my back. They put the handcuffs on me, they pushed me against the wall and then pushed me on the ground. I demanded to see my producers. I, I saw Sharif across the parking lot. His arm was bloody. His arms were handcuffed behind his back. He was wearing his credentials. I couldn't find Nicole. I heard she was, her face was bloody. I said to a police officer, this is unacceptable. Her face is bloody, her nose is bleeding. And he said, police officer said, I've been knifed in my life. And he said, you, you're complaining about a bloody nose? I said, excuse me, I'm sorry you were knifed, but that's not our responsibility. She was bloodied in your custody. Um, anyway, I got to Sharif. We were both uh, with our hands behind our back handcuffed, and I kept demanding that we should be freed as accredited journalists. And the Secret Service came over and ripped my credentials off my neck. Um, and then we were brought off to jail. Lovely. Um, I have some qu other questions for you as well. Um, you just come from both the Democratic and the Republican conventions. What was the atmosphere like? Was there a difference in atmosphere between the two the, conventions? There were riot police and fully outfitted at both the Democratic and Republican conventions. Um, they didn't arrest as many people in Denver. There were over 100 people arrested. In St. Paul, there are over 800 people arrested. The full array of riot gear and pepper spray and, um, was used, and it was used in Denver also. Most moving were the protests that were led by Iraq veterans against the war, uh, Iraq and Afghanistan veterans against the war, who were demanding that their voices be heard. At the Democratic Convention, they came right up to the, oh, Pepsi Center. You see, everything is sponsored by a corporation. Mm -hmm. So in Denver, it was the Pepsi Center. In St. Paul, it was the Excel Energy Center. Excel gave a million dollars to both the Republican and Democratic uh, parties uh, to the conventions. Um, they advocate nuclear power, and so do the candidates. So it all worked out very nicely. <laughs> But uh, they marched up to the Pepsi Center and they wanted to deliver a message to the Obama campaign calling for the troops to be withdrawn, for vets to get full benefits and full care, and for there to be reparations to the Iraqi people. That almost led to a terrible standoff with the, all the riot police in full gear about to pepper spray, uh, open fire with whatever it was that they had. Uh, but ultimately, uh, that was that conflict was headed off. I mean, certainly the protesters were very peaceful and they were able to deliver a message to the campaign, the veterans liaison for the Obama campaign. In St. Paul, they were just, they attacked many different protests. There was the people, poor people's protests, there was the immigrants' protests, there was the anti-war protest. And each day there was a different protest, or there would be multiple protests. But, you know, this was the first day I'm talking about getting arrested. And it was ridiculous. But before the first day of the convention on the weekend were the preemptive arrests, mm -hmm. the preemptive raids, which were we got a text um, at the airport when we just came in that they were raiding uh, eyewitness video, which is well known. It's a New York group that documents police activity, particularly around the 2004 RNC where 1,800 people were arrested. People were swept off the streets, held for 34, 
48, 72, 100 some odd hours. It was against the law, illegal arrests. Hundreds of people had all their charges dropped afterwards. Um, and a lot of them because police did not tell the truth about the circumstances of their arrest. And it was shown by these videos. You'd even have police video that was edited that incriminated people. But when you saw the whole video, you saw that it was telling a very different story. And that's what eyewitness video had. So they came to document the behavior of the police and in a preemptive raid, their house was surrounded on Saturday. We were there. Um, automatic weapons uh, by the police. The police spread an automatic weapon, pistol moved in on them in the living room uh, with their pistols drawn at their heads. Uh, our producer who was there, um, Elizabeth Press, put the camera on her head because she was afraid they would say it was a gun. And then they brought them out in the backyard, handcuffed them behind their backs. And no one could see what they were doing because the press was kept across the street uh, in the front yard until this family next door was so enraged at what they saw through their window that they called all the press to go through their house and into their backyard. And that's when we were videoing everything that was happening. So, uh, you know, preemptive raids are like Minority Report, Tom Cruise's film where you're um, arrested for pre-crimes. That's preemptive. Raids. And um, they're a great concern. And now, a group of people, the RNC Welcoming Committee, have uh, been jailed and they face seven years in prison for, well, they're the first people charged under the Minnesota version of the USA Patriot Act, which was passed in 2002. But, you know, we have to shed a light on what they want to keep dark for the rest of us. Um, because this is supposedly democracy in action. And of course, covering what was happening in the streets was essential. That too is the democratic process. That is the silenced majority, and they're out on the streets. It has such a chilling effect if you have a reporter inside who's told to cover the McCain speech, and he or she thinks, well, you know, if I go an hour early out into the streets, I'll get the feel of that, and then I'll go into the McCain speech. But if reporters are getting arrested, they're not gonna risk going out because they have to do this other job. Um, well, I feel that this is a part of our job. It's not a side show. Mm -hmm. It's as important as what's going on inside. And so we have to run the whole gamut, which is why we cannot be embedded. We shouldn't be embedded in the establishment in Washington. We shouldn't be embedded in the front lines of troops in Iraq. And we shouldn't be embedded uh, in the police forces um, that are taking on these protesters. I mean, that's what the police chief recommended in St. Paul, but that should not be the answer. And they use fear to make you feel like you have to be embedded. Well, you know, if you're going to be bloodied to the ground, yeah. Um, yeah. then you think, well, I might as well just embed. But what does that mean? You're at one side of the line and you're looking out and in the same way in Iraq. So everyone out there is a threat to you as the police see them as a threat. And if you're being protected, so-called protected by these people, if you're... Uh, eating with them if you're coming to know them, but you don't know the people who are out there They become the other and as reporters we have to be there to show everyone right. um, This is a little more personal, but um, What keeps you going? Um, seeing all the people who care so much mm -hmm. all the people who stand up to the madness all the people who may not go looking for trouble, but when trouble comes to them, they stand up. And, you know, my brother and I have written this book called Standing Up to the Madness, Ordinary Heroes in Extraordinary Times. It's all those ordinary heroes in every walk of life who are deeply concerned about the state of this country right now and are doing something about it. 